So today's guest is Rebecca Alfred from Trellis, who's going to talk a little bit about improving event marketing strategies by leveraging what you already have and what you what already works. So instead of coming up with fancy new things, let's go deep into things that already work. And so who is Rebecca, you ask? First of all, a repeat host here with us, a repeat expert. Rebecca is part of the team at Trellis Social Enterprise, supporting charitable organizations, hospitals, nonprofits, and other orgs to find new online approaches to raising money for the causes they care about. Rebecca comes from a diverse background, including technology, marketing, accounting, but now she's totally settled into our social sector. And since starting at Trellis, Rebecca has supported hundreds of organizations as they run fundraisers with specialized expertise around signature fundraising events and donor experience in both virtual and hybrid fundraisers. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm really excited because we've got some amazing and really effective tactics that we're going to share around event marketing. So whether you're new to marketing or you've been doing this for a year, this session has been designed for you guys. But before we started, I wanted to share a quick story with you about the impact good marketing. During the pandemic, Shannon was really close to having to shut down her entire organization. They lacked the very necessary funding that they needed in order to keep their organization going. And she was really worried she was going to have to let go of most of her employees. But Shannon didn't want to give up. And so she started planning an online event with the simple goal of $40,000. It was going to be just enough to keep them open. You might know what that feels like. The pandemic has been so hard for organizations across the board. And as Shannon's organization, Mamas for Mamas, supports moms and a lot of single parents, she knew she couldn't let them down. Through a strategic focus on social media, email marketing, utilizing her event partners and her network to reach a wider audience, Shannon was able to raise just over $220,000 in less than 24 hours. And a huge piece of this amazingly wild success came from leveraging her event partners, which we're going to talk about today and is one of the key strategies I'm going to share. So I know as you're sitting here, not all of you are coming from the same starting point. Some of you might not have large networks or followers or email lists or budgets like Shannon that you can rely on, but the tactics we're going to talk about are going to work for every single one of you, regardless of where you're starting from today. So. Here's what we're going to do. Let's briefly review an event marketing schedule and dive into the types of social media content that catches attention and then get to what to do if you don't have a big email list or a big social media following. Towards the end, we'll discuss how data collection can help you build marketing lists and reiterate on your strategy. Just as a heads up, we are going to go pretty quick through the first two here and then really dive into event partners and data tracking. But throughout the session, I'm going to share some real life examples and ideas from organizations that we've seen succeed. My goal for this time here is that you all walk away with clear next steps on how to market your next fundraising event and how to track an event. In addition to all of that, we've also put together a guide on event marketing that goes way further into depth than what I can talk about in this one hour block we have right now. Zoe's going to throw a link in the chat right now. You can download the guide. You can think of this talk, step one, and the guide is like step two. We cover the same topics, but the guide includes how-to steps to build social media posts, examples to follow, advice from our industry expert partners, and worksheets and checklists to help make sure you aren't missing anything. But before we do all of that, let's rewind a little bit and first talk about who we are. Uh, we're from Trellis. We help build fundraising software for events, auctions, and raffles. And we work exclusively with charities and nonprofits. We build tools to help charities with all of their events from galas to golf tournaments and standalone fundraisers as well. Hundreds of charities have run fundraisers on Trellis and we've learned a lot about their successes and failures. I've personally been involved in helping probably about 300 of those charities execute their events. So I'll be sharing with you some of my favorite ideas and tips to make sure your fundraising events are a success. I'm Rebecca. I'm joined here by two of my colleagues, Emily and Zoe. Zoe's going to be hanging out in the chat, but just answering any questions. And she'll also be saving some of the questions you guys ask. For the very end, we'll do a live Q&A and go back and forth here. 
So as we're going, please ask as many questions as you can. But me and my team were joining from the unceded territory of the Sioux people. And we also wanted to just take a moment to recognize the land we get to live in. Like I said earlier, we are going to move pretty quickly through our first two sections and then really dive into the last two. But again, because we are going quick, if you have questions at all, make sure to throw them in the chat or the Q&A box, and we will definitely be responding to all of those as well. But the first thing we want to do is we want to go back to square one and talk about the entire event marketing schedule before we dive into the specifics on how to execute each of these. Now, to start, we've put together a pretty rough timeline, and I know that these timeframes are going to look different for your organization, and that is totally okay. But we wanted to just map out the five different stages to your event marketing schedule that you're going to need to include. The first one is you're going to start planning for your next event. And the day that happens is actually the day that your last event ends. So you'll want to announce your next event during the event that's currently running and start sharing it with attendees through emails too. Next, you're gonna launch your ticket sales. And when you do so, email your past attendees to invite them. Use your email newsletter to let your donors know first and start posting about it on social media. You'll also want to message all of your event partners and ask them to share it with their networks too. But we're gonna get into that a little bit further in a sec here and really work through what our event part. Next, in the few months or weeks leading up to the event, you're going to want to increase the frequency of all of your marketing tactics, including social media and emails. And then in the last couple of weeks before the event, start re personal reach outs to encourage your donors to attend. This could be a phone call or a personal email. We love the personal touch of a phone call. It could be a simple two minute call from a leader in your organization, just letting your donors know what you have planned for the event and a direct invitation to attend. Not only does this go a long way for your donors, but that personal connection can help build valuable relationships for your organization. Then in the final week before the event, make sure to keep reminding your event partners to reshare posts, ask about your event, or to create um, their own announcements about their involvement with your fundraiser too. We've seen some really creative ideas when it comes to event fundraising. One of the ideas that Zoe shared with our team here at Trellis was this idea she heard from one of our event partners, and it has quickly become one of our favorites. I would take a screenshot right now just so you can save it for your next one. But for this organization, they needed to incentivize their donors to buy tickets sooner. And this could include using discounts or entries or special gifts. But this one organization, they took it a bit further. They involved their sponsors. And so they asked their sponsors, can you guys donate 100 bottles of wine? And for the first 100 people that bought tickets to the event, they got a complimentary bottle of wine to enjoy during the event, if it was virtually or in person. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if there was a bottle of wine on the line here, I am definitely going to buy my tickets faster for an event. Um, and that was the exact same result that they found for this organization. Now, I don't know what it is for you. Maybe it's not a bottle of wine with your donors. Maybe it's something else. But think about what's going to resonate with your donors. How can you encourage them to buy tickets earlier? How can you involve your sponsors in that as well? Okay, so like I said, we were going to go quick through that first one. And that kind of covers a high-level event strategy and timelines. If you wouldn't mind just taking a second here, if you have any questions, please throw them in the chat. And like I said, Zoe's in there and would love to answer them as we go, or she's going to be saving some for our live Q&A at the end as well. And as you're typing away, let's now look at social. Again, maybe you can also throw this in the chat. I would love to know, is social media a struggle for your organization or is it something that's succeeding for you? Again, throw it in the chat. I'd love to know just to see where people are at these days. Let's see. We'll give everybody 30 seconds here. Uh, to start typing, I was talking with some other organizations the other day and a lot of people were all over the fence. There was a lot of people struggling. A lot of people were saying that it's pretty in and out. It's good at some points, not so good at other times. Yeah, always a struggle between branding and fundraising, struggle, struggle on certain platforms, excelling at others. Awesome, Keely. I love that you guys are seeing success in some platforms. It's a great start. Depends on the platform. Madeline said the same thing. Yes, but it's ongoing refinement. Uh, I love that, Myla. I love that you guys are reiterating on the process. That's amazing. Struggle, struggle. 
Okay. The mix here. Awesome. We have worked with a lot of organizations and the ones that focus on social media tend to great getting, get great engagement and often engage donors outside of their, <laughs> sorry about that, outside of their typical demographic. And the organizations um, <clears throat> that we're working with, wow, one sec. There we go. That might be better. Nothing worse than when people are coughing on mute or on <laughs> with their mics on. But the organizations we're working with tend to follow five different key elements and create a simple formula out of it that's allowing them to succeed. And so I wanted to bring you guys what those five things are. The first one is a clear and catchy call to action. Super simple, but just getting sure that people know what you're asking them to do. The next is an easy to remember and an engaging image, attention grabbing captions, and then tagging and hashtagging to spread the word. And we thought, why don't we take a look at a social media post that did this really well? And I love this one post in particular from Georgian Bay Hospital Foundation. I know we've got some Ontario friends in this call too, so this is a little bit more local to you guys. But let's take a look at how they set up their post. So first, they have a clear call to action to register for the event. And it's great. It gives an easy and really direct next step for people to take. Their call to action is easy. Help raise more for Georgia Bay Hospital Foundation by registering for free. This link. It's direct and donors know exactly what is being asked of them. When thinking about captions, I just encourage you to have a really direct and active tone so that your donors are clear on what to do and they actually go on to take action. Next, they have a link. Now on Instagram, you can put the link in your bio at the very top of your page, or like these guys, make your link really easy so you can copy and paste it into the description as well. Other social media platforms make it easy to click the link directly in your posts. These guys in this post, they just included the link in their description. Short and easy, people can take it, copy and paste it into their web browser as well. The third thing they have is a really engaging photo. Now, if Lane that this fundraiser is going to be a lot of fun. Lane the auctionista is a partner of Trellis and we absolutely love them. But they've got a super captivating smile and they've got a bright pink jacket, which again, it's going to just draw the eye as you're done. They also added a great caption. They started their caption with the words record breaking to get attention. Use words that, again, bring that sense of urgency and encourage people and get them excited so that they can get their donors engaged when they're social, scrolling through social media. And they used another tactic, which was partner tags. So they tagged the people that are involved in their event in this post as well. Again, a really great way to make it easy for them to reshare what's going on. They've also used hashtags to encourage engagement and make their posts more relevant and searchable. And although you may not instantly see the return from things like hashtags or tagging your partners, the payoff in the long run is definitely there. Okay, so maybe you're looking at that and you're like, Rebecca, that is great, but I can't do that at my organization. I don't have somebody dedicated to social media or I don't have a graphic designer in my back pocket that can help me create graphics similar to what? The Georgian Bay Hospital Foundation did. And if that is the case, not to worry. In our guide, we actually recommend some of our free or our favorite tools to create Instagram worthy posts for free. And so if you download the guide, you'll definitely find it in there. And we can also make sure it's thrown in the chat there too. So you guys can quickly grab that. And again, before we move on, if you have any questions about social media, I would love to throw them or I'd love to hear them. Again, throw them in the QA box and we will definitely answer them at the end of our live session too. So now you may be thinking, what do we do next? And we're going to jump into event partners and we're going to talk a lot about what that looks like. And if you're thinking right now, I've never done an event before, so I don't have an old email list to go back to, or I don't have a big social media following I can rely on. And I don't actually have the budget for ads, but even if I did, I probably wouldn't know what to do with it. So what about me? If that sounds like you, then your saving grace will be utilizing your event partners and network to help your marketing efforts reach a wider audience than you currently are. You may be wondering, what do we mean by event partners? And truly, your event partners are every single person involved in the execution and planning of your event. And before you sit there and think, well, I don't have any of those, let's make a list of all of the event partners you do have. So first, let's start with your sponsors. Maybe you have a live auction, or maybe you've got a silent auction with 10 items. Now you've got 10 people right there you can reach out to, 
all of your auctions item sponsors and ask them to start talking about your event. Maybe you've got a restaurant providing your food as a restaurant sponsor, or you've got in-kind sponsors that are providing other elements, maybe event decor or technology or a venue. And then you've also got your monetary sponsors too. Your organization sponsors, those or our or supporters, I should say, they would be your volunteers, your staff, your board members, and any key donors you have. Who is it for you in this group and how can we engage them all? Or maybe you've got community influencers or thought leaders in your community or industry. How can you engage them and ask them to share what you're doing? Remember, these are all people that already love your organization and will be happy to share your event. You just have to make the ask. Next, you've got your talent. Maybe you've got speakers or hosts or auctioneers or a band that's participating in the event. These individuals tend to have a following already, so you can try and leverage that if possible. And then the last category of event partners we'll talk about are your fundraising professionals. That could be, again, your AV team, your venue, event planners, fundraising consultants, production companies. Keep in mind that especially people local to your organization will be especially willing to share your event just because it's in the same community as where they are, where they are too. So now that we know who your event partners are, you're going to want to make it really easy and set expect expectations really well in order to engage them. And so here are three simple ideas to get you thinking. The first, tag your partners on social media and encourage them to reshare your posts. Like we talked about with those kind of five key steps to a good social media post, it's a really great place to start and you can encourage them to share that with their network too. Next, make it really easy for them to share. Maybe you create a Google Drive or a Dropbox with a bunch of sample social media posts that they can use, and maybe some sample captions as well that they can take. And then of course, add it to your contract. When you've included it in your partner contract and from conversations starting on day one, they know that they're being asked to participate with promotion. It makes that entire conversation so much easier. So set yourself up for success then and make it part of the agreement. Another idea that you're probably going to want to steal and screenshot now is to make inviting people a game. And we actually mean that. Giving all of your event partners or your organization supporters a custom affiliate link and then setting a goal on how many invites you want them to send out. So you could give them an email template and set expectations of they need to send out at least 20 invites a week or whatever the number is. Then each week, give an update on how many emails were sent from each person and who the current winner is for inviting the most people. When the event ends, you can then give people a prize for the winner there. Especially with things like this, right? When we're using affiliate links, having it all online just makes it so much easier for your donors so that or your supporters and event partners to make it really easy to. With your event partners, as well as your own reach out, email communication is also really key. So consistent emails, pushing to your fundraiser, reaching, reminding people to buy tickets, giving them updates, getting them excited about silent auction items, or just excited about the event in general are really great ways to drive more engagement. So I'd encourage you again to plan an entire strategy around this. Use email drip campaigns, regular emails to, people, to keep people engaged, both from your existing email list as well as your donors. Again, in the guide, we do talk about each sponsor type and some really great ways to engage your partners based on sponsor type, including emails and how to do that. Unfortunately, we just don't have the time to really get into it right now. So again, I'd encourage you to download the guide and then you can figure out different ways to engage all of your different sponsors and partners through there too. And there's some other great ideas that you can do. Now we're going to move into the last section, which is all about data collection. But again, if you have any questions about, about e event partners, how to engage them, email marketing, all of that, throw it in the chat and we will be answering those shortly here as well. And as exciting as it is to focus on getting the word out, it is also super important to track and learn which of your marketing efforts are working so that the next time you do a fundraiser, you can drill down on what actually works for your organization. Even when we talked about social media at the beginning, it was all across the board. Some of you guys are struggling with it. Some of you are seeing some success with certain platforms and some of you are succeeding with it across the board too, as it's different for every organization. So there's no one, one one solution for everybody, but figuring out what's working for your organization will set you apart and allow you to be more successful in the long run. 
again, like everything else, there are tons of ways that we can approach this. And so we wanted to start by giving you two of the most effective ways to get started. And the first one would be custom checkout questions. It's a really simple and easy way to do this. And a custom checkout question can be used so that you can learn more about your donors. So when your guests buy a ticket, you can ask them how they heard about your event. And we see people have the most success with this when they make this option required as they're buying tickets and give them a drop down with some different marketing efforts that you had to see what they're doing and how they came. So how would we do this? First, you're going to set up your ticketing page. And you're going to add in a custom question to each ticket option that says something along the lines of, where did you hear about this fundraiser? And then you're going to drop some drop down question options below a friend or family member, social media, an event partner, social media, an email newsletter, whatever it is for you guys. Again, if you want to get more specific, you can, you could maybe have another question afterwards that says something along the lines of put in the name of the person that referred you or the company that referred you. And then your donors are going to come along and they're going to buy tickets to support your event. They'll see this question when they're paying for their tickets. And if you've made it required, then they are uh, required to obviously give you that information. As you're doing this, don't be afraid to make changes as you go. If you find right at the beginning, you notice everybody's coming from social media, use that information to your advantage and steer how you're going to keep promoting your event. You don't have to wait till the end of your event or your fundraiser to learn from the data being collected. And once you're making, once you've collected all this information, again, you can make better decisions around your marketing at this event or your next one. So you're focusing your time, energy, and potential money on what's actually working. You guys all know you're working with small teams or you don't have that much time or energy or capacity to take on more things. So let's just focus on what's working and really stick to those things and figure out how we can improve them instead. Another great tactic I wanted to briefly touch on was affiliate marketing links. And I dropped the beginning of this when we were talking about using affiliate marketing links to get more promotion through your event partners. So with your fundraising page URL, you can create specific links for different social media platforms, websites, event partners, board members, and anywhere else or anybody else you can think of that will be finding your page. Then after the event, you can see which channels drove the most engagement for your ticket sales. And again, if this is all new to you, don't worry, we are going to go over some next steps in just a minute here. Now, now that we've got more people engaging with our fundraiser, we want to make sure we continue to grow our email list. So first, you're going to make sure that everybody that signs up for your event is also added to an email list in the future. This will make it a lot easier the next time you go to promote an event if you already have donors to reach out to. And there are two really easy ways to do this. One, you could add a note in your ticket, letting people know that they will just be added to an email list. Or two, you can add another custom question um, asking people if they wish to be added to your email list, similar to the one that you guys would have seen as you signed up for this session. And hopefully you all said yes to receiving some more details about Trellis too. Again, if you're worried about a double opt-in, no need to. All you have to do is after the event, follow up with all your newly collected emails and ask and just confirm that they're okay to be on your list. This is also a really great time to reach out and say thank you, to thank donors for coming to the event, or to reach out to new donors and again, thank them, find out why they chose to support, and learn more about how people want to engage with your organization too. But sending that email will achieve that double opt-in and help you create a growing email list so that the next time you have an event, you've got a full list that you're ready to go back to and uh, keep engaging to get promotion out for the next fundraiser too. Okay, let's review. Um, here are the four things we talked about, but there is one more that we are going to get to, and it is really important, so let's spend some time there. But first, we talked about event marketing schedules. We talked about click-worthy social media posts, event partners, and data collection. But the last piece that I wanted to mention is actually really important, and you guys might not take it as seriously, but I actually think it might be the most important part of this all. The first thing that you're going to need to look at is your software and what software you can use to support your event marketing. Eli said right at the beginning there that technology is really powerful, especially in the nonprofit space. And one of the reasons why is because it can make or break an event that you have. Finding a software that can support your event marketing is really important and single-handedly has the ability to change your success. 
the wrong software isn't going to have custom checkout fields, which might only sound like one thing. But when you ask your donors the right information, you get more insight into why they're choosing to support you. If you don't get that information, you don't get those insights. You won't be able to grow your charity in that way. And if you don't have the options to customize social media posts, then again, you won't be able to create engaging posts that get your audience excited and drive more traffic to your event, which again, ultimately raises you more money for your cause. And before today, how many of you knew about affiliate marketing links? And if you did, how many of you were actually using them? As I'm talking to more and more organizations, I'm discovering that not that many people are using affiliate marketing links. And first of all, your software should be able to give that to you. But then secondly, you need to be using them. But using affiliate marketing links has the ability to help support your fundraising, help you track better, and really dial down into what's actually working for your organization. If your software doesn't currently support that, I would highly recommend switching and finding one that can give you affiliate marketing too. And finally, event analytic tools. You needed to learn more about your event after the event to find out what worked well and also see what did it. And if you can't see event analytics or results or see page views after the event, then you need to start looking into this as well. Those insights, again, are critical if you want to move your fundraising and your marketing strategy forward and raise more for your organization. I know that was a lot of information. At Trellis here, we do support all of the kind of pieces of your event marketing. I've actually worked really closely with our product design team because I just know how important it is for your organization. Thank you so much for listening. I know that was a lot of information. I'm Rebecca. My contact details are on the screen. So please send me a message and let's chat about your event marketing and how we could support that too. But I would love to open up the chat and let's see if we can answer some questions here. We've had some great questions coming in as we were talking. So let's kick it off. As we're answering these though, feel free to keep putting questions in the chat or the Q&A. We'll power through as many as we can. So yeah, so just keep going. We'd love to answer your questions. Uh, Before we go too far, I have a note yeah. here from Justin Block saying he has to drop, but he did write down three things. So okay. Rebecca, you're in the yeah. clear. I'm in the clear for Justin, but if I'm not in the clear for anybody else, please throw it in the chat. Thanks, Justin. I appreciate the vote of confidence. <laughs> That's awesome. So glad to hear Rebecca's email is there too. And just make sure you hold her accountable for that three notebook worthy points. So we'll kick it off with the first question. Yeah. So somebody who tuned in say that most of the organizations have a weak showing on social media. Most board members struggle with tech and they have a very wide demographic. So it's very hard to know where to, for this person, where would you suggest they begin to focus or how should they narrow down that audience to know where to focus? Yeah, that is a great question. And that is a question we often hear as we're talking about marketing. First, I would say if you are doing multiple platforms for social media, I would say seeing which ones have worked the best for you in the past. You might be thinking none of them have, but there's probably been one kind of more clear winner. For most people, it tends to be Facebook where they get more engagement from people right now. So I'd focus more of your time and energy there. Just to break down some of the different platforms, Facebook, we find people have everybody's on Facebook. So you can get pretty specific around the different groups or individuals that you want to connect with. And so most people find that's a great place to start and start slow, right? It could maybe be just two or three posts a week. And slowly you can build that up as you get more engagement and you get more uh, traction with different people and start to expand your network. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so we have this question on a similar tune, but someone was saying that their social media doesn't seem to be generating results. Obviously, what would be those next steps? It could be like partners, as you talked about. What would you suggest next steps if you're not really seeing those results from social media? Yeah, so I would say first start with those kind of five key elements that we said of social media posts. All of those, again, are in the guide. You can grab links from the chat or the screen, whatever works best for you. But I would start there. Think about your social media posts. Focus on those five key elements, the catchy title, the clear call to action, engaging images, good captions, and tags and posts or uh, tags and hashtags. And take a look at your social posts. See if you're doing all of those things and see how those posts are engaging compared to your other ones. I would also think about different ways that you can actually engage people through social media. A lot of people will say to us, well, I'm not getting much engagement, but there's actually not opportunities for people to engage. So maybe asking a question and encouraging people to give it a response back through your social media comments or whatever that is, could be another really great way to get some of that engagement going and start conversations to get people more and more people seeing what you've got going on. Well, on this next question, I love this next question because it's so important. 
But what are some of the metrics that you would be looking for on those social media posts or in general um, in marketing your fundraising event? Definitely. Good question. Honestly, Zoe at, at our team here, she's the one that looks after our social media. So she probably answers this better. But Zoe, jump in if I'm not doing it justice. I would say to start, one of the things you're going to want to look at is just your engagement. How many likes, comments, and reshares you're getting on your posts. Those are three really easy numbers you can see at a glance. Posts that you're getting lots of likes on them or lots of comments on them. Oh, Rebecca, just a heads up. You've got... That was strange. Maybe I should be good now. But if people are commenting back on your comments or on your posts, things like that, getting engagement, I would start looking at those four things. What did I say? Comments shares and then also likes the next thing you're going to want to keep track of is how many new followers do you have month over month or over some time periods how much new followers do you have what kind of traction are you getting on that front as well yeah and i'm just going to add to that a little bit like rebecca was saying those custom checkout questions obviously that's not social media based but you will be able to tell which social media platforms are working the best for you if you add those social media questions especially if you specify them down to twitter facebook linkedin instagram You'll be able to see which which of your purchasers are coming from those certain platforms and you can double down on what's working. Yeah, great point, Zoe. You're right. With those custom questions, you can also use that information to your advantage to help for that. So talking about, yeah, so the next we have a question on in like your time investment, how much time and investment you should be putting into the marketing. This is like a tricky question because it really is very dependent on your team and what is going on. But do you have any guidelines for kind of ratio to investment to return is realistic in like a event fundraiser? Like, how would you guide that? That is a hard question because you're right, Zoe. There is, it's so dependent on the organization and what's worked for you well in the past. Again, thinking about the return on investment and not just from uh, dollars coming in, but also the potential for new donors, long-term impact, creating awareness. Those are all factors that I would consider as well as I'm thinking on the investment I'm pouring into a specific. I would say definitely start by just tracking it. Start by seeing, and for your first one, it's going to be a lot of just looking at it and, and figuring out where to start. But tracking how much time are you actually spending on social media alone or just in email newsletters? And with those affiliate links or those custom questions, seeing how many people are actually coming from those places and figuring out how can you get more, how can you get tighter on the things that are working for you and maybe spend more time or more energy there? And how can you spend less time and energy on the things that aren't really working? or didn't really provide as much uh, value for you guys. The cop out, because I know I didn't really answer the question, but honestly, it is so dependent on organizations and in terms of like how much time you do spend, also dependent on the size of your organization, how much staff you have, things like that too. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so we've had a few people asking, and I think this will be an easy one for you since you've talked about a lot of kind of those crucial software elements. What fundraising platforms like are able to do this? Do you have any suggestions for people looking? Yeah, definitely. There are a lot of fundraising softwares out there. So there's lots of different ones you can look for. Depending again on what you're doing for your fundraiser, there's different platforms that do different things, right? You've got Giver G, you've got 32 options, you've got uh, Greater Giving, all great for your options, things like that. Ticketing, big range of different platforms you can use. A lot of people still use it then. Canada Helps, things like that as well. And then Raffles, again, just totally different ball game. There's Raffle Nexus, Raffle Box, Ascend, all those platforms as well. I would be, I have to obviously mention we're at Trellis here. So we are a fundraising software. We help organizations with their fundraising. We're actually an all-in-one platform too. So we do tickets, donations, auctions, raffles, the whole works. And then we do also support all of those fundraising elements we talked, or the marketing elements we talked about too. You write your event analytics, your affiliate marketing links, uh, social media posting, and then also custom checkout fields. So we do all of that too. But like I said, I work very closely with our product team. I talk to a lot of charities and I hear the things that are working for them. And so I can then go back to our developers and our de designers and say, these are the marketing pieces you guys need to add so that we can help charities raise more. Definitely all things we can do at Trellis. You can book a demo with our team if you want to just learn what we do or even just check it out and see the options. And then Eli just very kindly put in a link to our website as well. And yeah, we are BC based, but we do have our second office is actually in Saskatchewan. So I know there's somebody from Saskatoon, so we're all over. Awesome. And I'm just checking the time here. Looks like we have time for a couple more. Cut me off at any time if you, like, if you need to. We talked a lot about custom checkout questions and you covered some custom checkout question examples. 
But is there any other ways that you would use custom checkout questions to your advantage in terms of data collection? Totally. Not data collection related, but still very important. As we are slowly moving back into the world of in-person events, custom checkout questions are great for all of the like more logistic things too. Do you have any dietary restrictions? Do you want red wine or white wine with your event? Whatever it is questions like that. The key ones that you're going to look for in terms of data collection will definitely be adding people to email newsletter lists. So adding questions around that, maybe you're wording that as, do you want to learn more about our organization? Is there kind of other questions along those lines that you can also add, ask to get to the same place? In terms of other data collection things, I think the other really big one is just finding out the source of where people came from, how they found your page and details like about that too. Awesome. Going back to metrics of social media, obviously sometimes you got a lot of followers and some are good followers, some are like not as useful followers. So do you have any like advice on how you figure out those quality followers or how you really like dial down on getting the followers that you, you need and want for your events as opposed to just like random followers that aren't going to help you? Totally. Yeah. You're always going to have, and I see Alex, you threw that question in there. Alex, you're always going to have, I think, followers that aren't really of quality. Maybe they don't engage with your posts or maybe it was just your friend's friend that you you worked to their organization and just gave you a, just because they know it helps, but they may not be really your demographic or your target audience. And you're always going to have those people. And I think that's okay, honestly, but instead it's really focusing on the people that are engaging with your posts. And again, really taking a look at what's working. What kind of posts are they engaging with? Are they all posts that have a specific image or maybe video content? Whatever it is that's working, dialing down on that, and you'll start to attract more quality followers over time as well. I hate to say it, but it is true. Social media is a slow game, right? You start slowly, you start to build up that following, and sometimes you'll see quick kind of pickups, but it is really all about the maintenance of it and getting more and more followers over time. Awesome. Yeah. Keep going here. Yeah. So you've mentioned a couple ways. What are your favorite ways to encourage people to buy their tickets? Obviously, early ticket sales help with everything. They get you secured down, and so... And like, what's your advice there? Yeah, definitely. First, yeah, the wine bottle example. We love that one. 100 free bottles of wine from a sponsor. Like, how fun. Everybody's going to be all over that, I think. So doing things like that is great. Early bird tickets with maybe discounts or an organization I was chatting to just the other day are based in Alberta and they are doing a draw prize. So the first 100 people to buy tickets have a chance to win a gift basket with a prize that they're going to be announcing on the day of. Things like that always work. We've seen organizations more in a virtual or hybrid capacity doing extra mystery boxes or stay-at-home gala experience packages that they can buy to watch with the event. Again, typically they have the limited quantities available. Those could be meals, maybe a wine and cheese box. They could be just different elements to make that virtual gala experience stronger. Having those limited, uh, like a limited inventory of those, another great way to int- attract people to buy tickets sooner. And again, also help increase the amount that you're able to. Well, we had a, a great clarifying question here in the chat. Affiliate marketing, could you just give like the overview of that? And also while Rebecca is talking, I'm just going to throw her email in the chat here because we don't get to your question. She would love to think on it and get back to you. So I'm just going to do that while Rebecca goes into affiliate marketing. Yeah, definitely. So affiliate marketing would be, and I'm just going to um, scroll back here so you guys can see it on the screen too. At the same time, affiliate marketing links are really custom links that you can create for your event. So what that means is you're going to have a link to your fundraiser. Let's just say it's going to be trellis.org slash hybrid event 2022. I don't know what it is. What you can do is you can create custom links that then allow people, that all direct people to the exact same page but it has a little extra piece at the end makes that URL slightly longer, but we can direct, um, we can have specific links so we can see where people are coming from and what engagement they're, what engagement that's driving. So what we mean by that is maybe you've got a link that says trellis.org slash hybrid virtual event, uh, 2022 slash Facebook. That's your Facebook only link. So every time you post on Facebook, you're using that exact same link later on as you're selling tickets. You can go back into your affiliate marketing tool and you can see exactly how many dollars have come through the tickets sold on Facebook. Same thing with Instagram or maybe for a specific event partner, they've got their own link that they can use. And so creating those custom links to help you understand where are people coming from and where are you driving the most traffic? And more importantly, how much of that traffic is actually driving dollars for your organization? Awesome. Yeah. And and how important is using these affiliate links? You went into some of the kind of results of that. 
but like how much consideration would you put in to deciding whether you want to use as affiliate links or not? Yeah, definitely. I would definitely use them. I think that on um, our platform, I haven't used too many other ones. Our platform, it probably takes all of like 13 seconds to set up one affiliate link. So honestly, really not that long at all. So I would definitely use them. I would start using them. And maybe you start super basic, right? You've got your email version. You've got one that comes from your website directly and you've got social media. Doesn't matter what platform, social media always has the same link. Starting as basic as that will help you make decisions and help you feel more confident moving forward around what's actually working for your organization. So I would highly recommend it. Again, if you have questions around how it works or want to see kind of what other organizations have done and how they've set it up, let me know. Zoe just threw my email in there too. I'm going to flip back there on the screen so you can copy it down too. But we can chat further about how it works for you guys and your specific organizations as well. Going back to event partners, which event partners would you go to first? What, where are you going to get the best results from? Yeah, I would definitely start with your entertainment event partners. I can't remember off the top of my head what we just called that now. Your talent, your speakers, your bands, your musicians, all of those people, they just generally have a following already. And so starting with them first, like getting them all set up and posting about what you guys are doing is a great place to start. After that, I would look at your um, sponsors. Again, they've now given a financial commitment to support your event, so make the most of it. Easiest way to do that is to include in your contracts that they have to promote you guys. Makes also It makes it more successful that, for them as well when they're getting um, more recognition and awareness for what they're doing. So I would start there afterwards. And then finally, I'd end with your fundraising professionals, your AV team, people like that. And then, of course, your donors and your organization supporters are slightly different throughout the whole campaign. You can keep relying on them maybe at different points or when you've got new announcements, they're good people to constantly keep reaching out to. Awesome. Well, I think I'll, I'll finish there with the Q&A. Thanks for having me, everybody. Thank you so much, Rebecca. 